to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the podcast. It's that Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you're nasty, I'm your host today. I'm the captain now. Mike, the fantasy hit man, right? Joined by my best friend, Jason Moore. Hey, best friend, Mike. How you doing? I am 50-50 right now. Okay. You could be worse. Oh, I could be worse. How are you doing, Jay? I'm uh, 1090, my man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, 1090. I'm 1090. Doing, doing good about 10%. Is, uh, hey, could be worse. Yeah, could. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a glass with a little bit of water in it, kind of guy. Little splash. You know, I see the glasses. Look, look at that little bit of water. I don't see it as mostly empty. There's still like the dishwasher left right. a little. Yeah, a little in there for me. Yeah. Welcome into the podcast. Monday, September thirtieth. It was another wild week of football. The morning games were quite good. Had a lot of scoring. Finally, finally, touchdowns over field goals for once. The afternoon games were yeah. Don't the afternoon games had to <laughs> they had to bring us back down, but we made it through. I hope that your teams had themselves a good time on today's show. We will be getting into the puns, ready to roll. We're going to talk about defenses. But we're four weeks in, we can start making some better educated decisions about which defenses that we're going to attack because those change every year. And through the first couple weeks, things fluctuate, trying to figure out what's fluky, what is not. And then we'll be talking about the studs and the duds. The deucers are in the house. The Falcon is back from his massive dump. It was the entire weekend. Yeah. It was it was ridiculous. Get some preparation. What are you wearing, Matt? Yeah, he's, he, he's all decked what out in his wearing? Niners gear because he's, the Niners won and whatever. You look like the 49ers threw up on you. I would love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they had themselves a good week. Uh, a couple other guys had themselves a good week, so let's get sophisticated and celebrate, and then we will detonate on those that did not. Mm. <laughs> yes, would you, I will start, Jason. Okay. Derek Henry. You had Taysom, King of the Hill. <laughs> I guess we did. We had Xavier, legit. <laughs> Too, Too legit. legit. Uh, how about Sam Starnold? Yeah, how you like that one? Dude, he's he's the best quarterback in the NFL. Uh, Nico Ballins. You had the other great quarterback, Laser Mayfield. <laughs> I, re I really like that yeah, one. Pew, pew, pew. Uh, Jaden Manuels. Yeah, I mean, those, those guys are great. Yeah. But it's not all good. No. It's not all good. Sometimes no. you got guys like Skidmark Andrews. That's going to be a fun conversation for no one to have. Kyle Armpits. Or... Breezy's feces. Come on, Breeze Hall. <laughs> Garrett won't son. <laughs> Roma Doomsday. <laughs> oh, Kyler Murr. Eh. And Carson <laughs> steal my fab. Carson steal my draft picks. Yeah. Um. The Kansas City Chiefs running back situation. It's uh. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's not what everyone hoped with the Carson steal. Waiver dumps. Um, it, it, obviously, if if you are unfamiliar, if you didn't watch or didn't see, it became the Kareem Hunt show. Uh, the first quarter was Carson Steele. He got the start. He also fumbled right he away. He did fumble, and then he did not play much. In fact, he wishes that he scored as many fantasy points as Mark Andrews, who scored zero points. Yeah, Kareem Hunt led the running backs in snaps and carries, which... Going into next week, when we'll, we'll be talking about the waivers because Clyde Edwards-Alaire is eligible to come off of his. Uh, he's not on the IR. I think he's on the pup. Whatever, whatever. He's on the one of the lists where he has to miss four weeks. Will he be back? Will Kareem keep the job? Stay tuned to find out. Yeah, on tomorrow's episode, obviously the the waiver wire, we're going through all the pickups. But this is a really big week because this is the week that all the players who started right. on these lists are now eligible to return to practice to 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 play this next week. Not that they all will, but we will discuss who to pick up and who's coming back. And I got one thing to address here: Kyle and 
Papa Josh made a bet. Oh my goodness! Over gracious. the weekend, this was this bet was held in secret. I we did not know about it. It was because they're two teams, they're home teams. Papa Josh is a big time Saints fan. Kyle the Borgogan is a Falcons fan, and the bet was oh, it's you, awesome. You have to wear face paint of the other co uh, team's colors. Whoever whoever wins all day, you have to you have to do it to work. Yeah. And this is oh, your no, oh, it ain't oh. to work. Oh, what? Was one hundred percent of work. Kyle suggested that it was all day at work, and I said, "Dude, you work from home. That ain't nearly the same." And then he was like, "Shame yeah, on you." Say that. Hey, shame on you. Yeah, when you take a bet, you got to pay out the bet. That was not the bet. So when are you doing it? I gotta just do it at home. I gotta take a photo and then I gotta post it to socials. That's dumb. What a dumb bet. You know what? I'm changing the bet. I'm, I'm out changing here. the bet. I'm bailing you, you, out. You come to work tomorrow on this show. I want half red, half black. You are a falcon tomorrow. Oh, be a man. Gosh. Be all a man. Right, all right. I'll we'll see have two falcons I'll make it happen tomorrow. this week. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Probably, probably tomorrow, Thank though. you for pointing that out. Yeah. Mark. I mean, this, it's I've, ridiculous. I forgot. L yesterday, I was excited to see Josh today, and then I saw him. Wasn't excited. Didn't even think about it. Just embarrassing. All right. Let's talk about these defenses. Welcome to Ready to Roll, presented by Nissan. All right, we are a month in, and so we, you know, we talk about this all the time in the draft season about how much changeover there is on defensive rosters. It's not like a, uh, you know, a normal player. You have teams that are bad that become good, teams that were good that become bad, and and you know, just personnel changes. So now that we're a month in, we wanted to take a look at the defenses. And say like, okay, how are we targeting them? Because so much has changed, and so we're gonna focus on three categories here. Um, we use our Stream Finder tool for a lot of this. If if you're not familiar, it's an amazing tool. If you want to look at who to pick up to play at any position, it's almost uh, like it, I mean, it shares a lot of similarities with a strength of schedule tool, which we have that uh, as well for supporters that join the foot.com. But the Stream Finder is an easy, essentially like a backwards way because it, like the, you're streaming you're trying to find a player out the waiver wire specifically to target those defenses so it's 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 arranged a little bit differently but it once you figure out how to use it it's extremely powerful it is very powerful and and it gets a lot more powerful as the season goes on starting now because you, you know a lot of these tools out there you, you've got kind of the fantasy points given up I mean that's on the platforms right you look at whatever platform you are and it says oh they're 32nd against running backs right but it doesn't take into account who they have played. So we want to look at schedule adjusted points given up. And what that means is like, you know, let's say that you are, you know, a team gives up no points to the tight end position. And it's like, oh, they look like they're great against tight ends, except they've played, you know, the Panthers and Tommy Trimble. Like they don't, they don't use the tight end. And right. so it's like they didn't actually shut down the tight end. They just had a matchup that, that was like that. So after a month, we're going to focus on here's the here's a couple run funnel teams, here's a couple pass funnel teams, and the teams that you just want to throw everything at. The run funnels right now this year that are changed from last year. One is the Dallas Cowboys. Tell now, that to Devin. <laughs> I mean, a little bit of TBD. So what's, what's <laughs> Devin? The get it together. The Cowboys have not been able to stop anyone until this last week. And now, you know, I I do think with them And they're down two defenders now. Yes, they 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 lost uh, Parsons for a little while, um, and Demarcus Lawrence, yes. right? So not just two defenders, two great defenders. Yes, um, you know, last year they were fantasy's number one defense. Uh, they were tied with the Ravens for the eleventh best against fantasy running backs. So far this year, three out of the four games they've been destroyed on the ground with their losses. I would be fine targeting um, upcoming running backs. Uh, you got Najee, who looks like he might be alone in the backfield coming up next week, and then the Gibbs and Monty after that. The other team is the Buffalo Bills. Dude. The, I mean, if you Dude. saw Derrick Henry last that, night, the Derrick Henry run, where it go the first back, the first run, yeah, the the first huge run, like go back and watch it a few times. I pick a new player each time. It's one of those videos for me where th th secrets just start unlocking of. <laughs> One cornerback, I don't know if the man made a business decision or if he just took the worst angle possible to stop him because Derrick Henry just breezes past him. And then the wall of three Buffalo Bills 
running as fast as they can and watching them run is like these guys are working. The arms are pumping. I can almost I can hear the footsteps. I can hear the breath. And Derrick Henry looks like he's jogging. Except uh, Der- he's jogging faster than everybody. Derrick Henry always looks like he's jogging. <laughs> Derrick Henry has never looked fast on a run to my eyes ever. You, because you, he's big. It's like a train. Like when you right. watch a train, it looks like it's going slow. Even if it's going 100 miles an hour, it's just like trugging along. It's like the uh, um, when you see airplanes in the sky, like I need clouds. Right, I need yeah. I need something to, that I can gauge. How fast is that? It's just it looks like it's barely moving. Put some clouds in there. Oh, that plane's going really, really fast. I'm gonna tell you what. If I ever make a business decision, if I was a defender, <laughs> it would be against. Derek yeah, I Henry. don't blame him. That would be the one. Um, but yeah, the Bills have last year they were the number three uh, DST. This year they are very, very good against the pass, sixth best against the pass, and they are just gashed on the ground. You had the Cardinals, the Dolphins, and now la- yesterday the Baltimore Ravens just destroy them on the ground. So you've got maybe Joe Mixon this coming week. You've got, hopefully, Brees Hall gets it together the following week and Braylon mm. Allen. Aye. And on the opposite, you've got those teams that like you can't run on at all, but you can throw on. One of them is the Jacksonville Jaguars. You can throw all day on them. Uh, so far, through four weeks, you've had four awesome performances uh, from opposing quarterbacks and wide receivers, they have everybody eats against the Jaguars. Did you catch the Doug Peterson quote? I where he basically said, "It's quote, not my fault; it's the players." Quote: As coaches, we can't go out there and make the plays. It's a two way street. I think is yeah. His I think his players are gonna be super oh, happy gonna about love that. that. They're gonna really really love that. I think that's really let's fun. bring everyone together. It reminds me of a uh, Dennis Allen. So. <laughs> Uh, way to go, Peterson. Good Honestly, luck, Doug. they're they're reeling. I don't. I don't. I mean, he doesn't have very many weeks left. Probably if, not. if they keep losing. But if you are, um, you know, if if you're going to have wide receivers or quarterbacks, the Jaguars are a great matchup to focus on. Um, and then you've got two really good defenses here: the Vikings and the Ravens. They are great defenses. You watch the games, you go, "That's a great defense." You cannot run on those teams. You you just can't. Uh, the Vikings right now, they're number four in yards per carry allowed, number two in rushing yards allowed per game. The Ravens are number one and number one. You can't run on them. However, you can actually pass on them. Uh, for the Vikings, opponents are attempting 44 passes per game. That's number one in the NFL. Um, with the Ravens, I mean – the opponents are throwing 68% of the time, second highest in the NFL, third most passing yards per game. So, you know, these offenses are running. Uh, they're, they're, they're rolling, the Vikings and the Ravens. So you're going to have to pass. You might be down. You're trying to play catch up, and you can't run on them. It's, it's similar to the Lions. We're, we're not bringing up the Lions because they're the same as they were last year. Can't run on them, can't pass on them. So I, I think these are things that going forward we can have a little bit more confidence in because there's been enough of a trend with enough teams and matchups where we go, okay, this is legit. Start your wide receivers and quarterbacks against uh, Vikings, Ravens, Lions. And then you have the start everybody teams, which is the Commanders, the Colts, and the Rams. Just <laughs> just have fun. Just have fun. Just, just have a good time. Just put, score some put, points. Put your players in and say, let's go. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Thanks again to our sponsor, Nissan, and the all-new reimagined Nissan Kicks. Redesigned with a bold new look, the Nissan Kick sports the latest tech like a Bose Personal Plus sound system. Head over to NissanUSA.com to learn more. Bose Personal Plus sound system is an available feature. Bose is a registered trademark of the Bose Corporation. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. For tonight's games, because we got multiple ones, again, if you didn't uh, remember that, Raheem Mostert is not expected to play. Things were trending in a better situation for him. Seems like we'll probably see him back next week. Kenneth Walker, the bone zone returns tonight, Jason. Do we have any confidence with him to not really? I mean, yeah. you, you there's the a matchup ter- is terrible matchup. Yeah. We just talked about it. The Lions, you just can't run on the Lions. You can throw on them. So I, I you know, I like the Seahaw uh, the Seahawks uh receivers. Uh, I would start all of them. But Kenneth Walker, first game back from injury, I'm not excited for him or Sharps. I, th- I think they're going to split. I don't think they'll give Kenneth Walker, like, 
the eighty percent load he he you know he he usually gets when he's active right off of an injury and it's a tough matchup. So hopefully you have other options. So let's see next week against the Giants. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. I, I I mean you just I think if you're a Walker fan or if you've got Walker your your biggest hope what you're watching for is that he leaves this game healthy. That's that's yeah. what matters because I do feel like they're rushing him back a little bit and he's done this before where he's like. Tried to hustle back from injuries, and then you get re re injured. Speaking of injuries, buckle up, everybody. That's what the news is all about. Let's start with the positive side. The Browns are expected to open the twenty one day practice window for Nick Chubb. Remember, it is the ACL plus, and this is the practice window. That does not mean that he's back next week. It doesn't mean he's back the following week. However, this is great news that they're opening the window because it's. Look, it's 21 days. Yeah, it's a guaranteed that he will be back within the next three weeks or else he's not or allowed he shut to come down. back. Yeah, he shut down for the season, so the Browns felt confident enough that they'll get him back in the next couple weeks. Uh, Jay Glazer reported that Puka Nakua is expected to miss at least another month and Cooper Cup expected to miss at least the next two games. Christian McCaffrey, the saga <laughs> rolls forever. Yeah. Uh, this one, look, this was Ian Rappaport said he's expected back by early November. This one, I don't know. That That's the way I'm operating, that if he is back at all this season, which I do think he's back, I'm not on the side of they're going to shut him down for the year. November is what I am looking for, but be careful out there. The reports are fast and furious and loose yeah. with Christian McCaffrey online right and, now. And, and they're all over the place. I, I do think that the most trustworthy analysis I have seen is not based on reporting. It's simply based upon the procedure he went to go get. And right. And when he went to go get it, that – From the from Germans. From the Germans, um, that procedure, he should not be ready usually earlier than six weeks. So six weeks is that timetable, um, which would put you – obviously, you miss all of October. They're saying early November. Early November, I think, could easily be mid-November. You think Christian McCaffrey flies, Coach? No. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, Adam Schefter reporting Raiders wide receiver Devontae Adams is considered week to week. That was a big time bummer because that was a that was days before the game that he got uh downgraded at practice. And now we'll stand by and figure out when he's actually gonna play. When Cla is their bye week? Is this gonna fit? Yeah, find that out. Uh looks like they don't have their bye week till week ten, which is okay. great news in the <laughs> in the sense that a lot of times when you're close and you're you know right. maybe you could come back they're going to shut you down if you if your bye weeks the next week so he'll be back when he is ready I mean this is kind of like what you saw with uh AJ Brown um AJ Brown had the hamstring pop up late and um you it know it seems like he should be back it it does seem like he should be back but that that's the thing is their bye week is this week so I think oh, gotcha. I wonder if he might have played this current week if they didn't have the bye week next week where He'll be back next game, but hey, that that is uh that's been need, a month of missing games. They need that man back. Uh Clyde Edwards Alaire of the Chiefs is expected to return to practice. Another Whee! Chiefs injury. Rasheed Rice. Oh, come on, man. We still don't have the confirmation of what happened. He's feared to have torn his ACL in Sunday's win over the Chargers. It was just an absolute brutal random situation of Patrick Mahomes throws an interception. The whole team goes scrambling towards him to tackle him, and then Rushy Rice knocks the ball out. Yeah, and Mahomes, like, oh. Mahomes went low for the tackle, I think is what was going on, and he ends up hitting Rice right in the leg. His leg was planted. The thing did a uh, a real nasty hyperextension. Watching it, it was the cross your fingers and be hopeful that – you see guys do that, uh huh, and it, you're like, that looks like the most painful thing I can imagine. But then they only end up missing a couple weeks because it's just a hyper I remember, I think, I think George Kittle, Kittle had that yes, last he did. year. Or, uh, yeah, yeah he, he looked like a, like a flamingo almost when we, it happened to him. <laughs> that's, that's a nice visual. <laughs> I totally know what you mean. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we don't have the confirmation, but it is. It's a torn ACL. Every, everyone out of the Chiefs camp has been not positive. There, there, are, there are tests that you can give that are, you know, just – you need the MRI to confirm what you already know, and I can only remember like one time ever in the decade of doing this where a team has thought that they did tear an ACL, and then it turns out they didn't. Right. The Rasheed Rice in uh, conversation gets very difficult when you start talking about dynasty. Of if he tore his ACL, he's done. He'll be done for the year. 
He'll be rehabbing all year. Then he'll be facing a suspension. I don't know how it works with the suspension and IR. Because it seems like that you can you double dip? Like can you be like I'm on IR? This this counts as my suspension. No, I don't. I don't, I don't think so. I I, I think if it's got to be games that you are able to be active for. So, so don't put him on IR and start that suspension now. Come on. I mean, so Chiefs. well, I'm sure we'll talk about him on the Dynasty podcast, but that is goodness gracious, what a swing of value. Yeah, he went yeah, yesterday morning, he was probably top 5ish in, yeah, in Dynasty top, wide receiver, top, top 10, 10 for sure. Yep. And now you might not have him for a year from now, yeah. even longer than that. So a lot to dive into later. Packers wide receiver Christian Watson is expected to miss multiple weeks. It's a high ankle sprain. There is no fracture, but they are. It, we're, the reports are that they're considering IR. It was one of those brutal things. The leg got trapped under him. We will talk about uh, oh yeah, Dontavian Wicks yeah. tomorrow, who's probably my number one pickup if he's out there the, on the waivers. Big, the big pickups, Dontavian Wicks, and then this situation, Colts running back Jonathan Taylor. He left the game. Watching him on the sideline, his body language was bad. Like this is just this is narrative and being a human and trying to figure out what's going on. A lot of times you see these guys on the side, and you can see that they're just they're frustrated, but they're trying to figure out how to get back in the game. He didn't look like a man who was coming back in this game. Uh it was diagnosed of a high ankle sprain. But um, it's mild. But it's mild, which is <laughs> I don't know. Trey Sermon will be the next man up, so that's what I was saying of he will be uh, probably a priority add. Colts quarterback, Anthony Richardson. He left with a hip pointer injury. It was on a scramble. Kind of got spun around by one defender, left that hip and rib area open for just a, a shot. He was down for a while. He did come back in the game. Didn't look good. And then scrambles again and attempts to slide, but not a slide where you go end up on your back. He kind of slid into the sitting position and then took a helmet right in the face, and then he was gone for the rest of the time. It is, yeah, yeah. It, the, the it's, hip, a, it's a rough situation right now. The hip pointer is basically a pain tolerance issue, so um, he's not expected to miss, miss much, if any time. Uh, I guess we'll just see see if he toughs it out this week. You know, it's like it's it's kind of sad in the sense that you, I think most fantasy managers out there right now are hoping he doesn't play. Because if Joe Fla if Joe if, Flacco if plays, you, if you Josh have. Downs, Michael Pittman, all these other yeah. options are great plays. Yeah, Michael Pittman had himself a very good game. So did and, Josh Downs, and it was not a coincidence that it was Joe Flacco who was a much better thrower of the ball at this point than Anthony Richardson is. Taysom Hill, he had the good game, but he left with another abdominal injury. Cordero Patterson of the Steelers left with an ankle injury. Oh man, you he was he was dominating. If you watched Sunday Live, I announced my my big galaxy brain play of the week. I played him I played Patterson over Javante Williams because I didn't want Javante to hurt me again, even though Javante actually had himself an okay game. But Patterson looked fantastic while Najee was not getting anything done. And then Patterson has to leave with an ankle injury because of course uh Travis Etienne missed most of the first quarter with a shoulder issue. He did return, but I mean, what what did he have? Let, let's look what he actually finished up with. Because Tank Bigsby had some more electric runs. Looks like ETN was 11 for 50 on the ground. He caught one pass. He has been. He's not been he's great. Not, he's not being talked about. Like, is it because it's it's not it's not so bad while there's just, while the, 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 the demolition derby of the fantasy football season is going on around us, we're kind of missing that Travis ETN has been I mean, I guess ten plus points in the first three weeks. Yeah, that's the thing is he he yeah, has so it's not, been okay. He has not been a star by right. any means, but he hasn't like he hasn't been on the poopy pants club yet this right. this year. So that that's why we haven't talked about him. And in even this last week, obviously he missed a lot of the first quarter, and so it was a much worse game. He's still their guy, though. Yeah, I can agree with that, but I don't know how much like does that continue for the whole season while Tank Bigsby keeps ripping off huge chunk plays. That's TBD. George Kittle got a little bit banged up and he returned. And then the a very scary situation with Tyler Bidet where he got he got absolutely laid out, fumbled, and then had a situation happen on the sideline where they put him on a board. 
He is. He's had full movement of his arms and legs, so it's at least – and I believe he flew home. Yeah, he yeah. flew home with the team, so that was a scary situation, but seems like he will will be okay-ish. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Let's talk about some guys who were studly. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. From the pits of despair, Jordan Love. (laughs) You played Jordan Love over Sam Darnold. And in the same game, and the beginning of this game was Jordan Love throwing the ball to the Vikings. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Sam Darnold. To be fair, some of those ones hit... That's, well, a single pass hit two Packers in the hands before the Minnesota Vikings got it. That's true. Not all of them were his fault. Although he did, he did look. Oh yeah, yeah. He looked like he was at a on a first game back with a very little practice to yeah. start that game. And while he was throwing it to Vikings, so was Sam Darnold in the end zone. <laughs> oh, so you felt really, really bad. But then, because the Vikings essentially went to Lambeau and blew the Packers out. I mean, they blew him away. It was 28 to 7. All of a sudden, Jordan Love had to go, hee haw, and throw it down the field over and over and over with great success. Ended up 389 yards, four passing touchdowns. Everyone other than the early injured Christian Watson, obviously, which stinks if you had him in your lineup, you got yeah, a goose. Which I did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Congratulations. I had him in one of my lineups. Um, everyone else, though, just a Dontavian Wicks was awesome. Jaden Reed is amazing. Dobbs is out there running enough routes. Like yeah, You can pretty much play all of them. Justin Fields, my stream of the week, ended up having himself a mighty good game. 300 yards through the air with a touchdown. Two scores on the ground. I mean, this – I they they lost, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah, so they ended up losing to the Colts. The It looked like halfway through, oh, man, this is the end here for Justin Fields. It but, did. But then Fields brought the team back – they only ended up losing by three points. So we'll see if he ends up keeping the job and Russell Wilson continues to be the emergency quarterback in his full regalia on the side. Laser Mayfield, the QB3 through the first month. He has been great. I mean, Blade. like when you just Blazer. watch. <laughs> Blazer. Blazer. <laughs> when you watch it's the games. A, he looks so good. His pocket movement, his, his connection with Godwin. Like he has all of these plays where – he throws the ball on a slant where the defender is almost be- – I mean, the defender's between Godwin and Baker, and it just throws it right past him where it's like Godwin can't see the it's ball. It's like he threw a laser? Yeah, it's like he threw a laser, and, and but he always comes down with it. So far, you have week one, he was the quarterback two. Week two, he was the quarterback six. And now this this week, he was the quarterback three. He's been awesome. Had one bad week against Denver, um, which – I think we are learning, if we want to talk about like defense, we're talking yeah. about defenses to target, sure. But if we also want to include defenses to avoid, mm-hmm. the Broncos are legit. I mean, ask Aaron Rodgers and, and Garrett Wilson. And, and it, you know, the the Denver defense is, is very good. C.J. Stroud finally came through with a big game. He was a start of the week. Sam Darnold kind of touched on it there of, I guess, here's the question. Do you believe now, Jason? Do you believe in Sam Darnold for fantasy? I do. Um, it took, that was hesitant. It it was hesitant. I mean, you you saw it in this game. He once again <clears throat> had a handful of throws in the second half that were boneheaded, should have been picked, and he ended up pretty lucky to um, finish how he did. However, the beginning of that game just outstanding, and this was. You know, this was in Lambo. This was on the road in a in a hostile environment against a good team. I mean, that's it. By my count, look, San Francisco, Houston, Green Bay. I would say those are three of the better defenses in the NFL, and that's the three weeks that Sam Darnold has been on this run. Yeah, and and so this next week he will be home, but against the Jets and a good pasty in their own right. And I mean, I I think you've got to. I you know, it's taken me like the question has always been week after week after week. Do you believe? Do you buy in? And I've been so hesitant because we've got a we've got a long career here. Of it's not like Geno Smith where he was gone 
for years and years and years. Like, we had years and years and years for multiple franchises of Darnold being the quarterback and failing. And so I was waiting, but I think I think you've got to you got to turn the page and say he's got the weapons and he's got the offensive system. There's a lot of plays that you see schemed wide open for him, mm -hmm. and then he's got Justin Jefferson, who's always wide open. So I I think you can I th I think Darnold is legit. He's going to have his bad weeks. I know it's going to come, but he, he should be in the streaming candidates every week. Jaden Daniels is unbelievable. The Arizona defense is terrible, yes, but another monster game for the rookie through four games. Jaden Daniels has led the commanders on more scoring drives than he's thrown in completions. I mean, the, if you jump on Twitter, the, the stats and the accolades that, that Jaden Daniels has produced through his first four games are absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, he, is, he looks perfect. He, he makes very few mistakes. He runs the ball so much, which is outstanding for fantasy. 82.1% uh, completion rate through his first four games. That is insane. So, he, I mean, he's, he's on. quickly becoming, you know, like a – I mean, who else would you start over him on a yeah. regular basis? Like, you're going to – despite the bad game, you're going to start Josh Allen over him yeah. for sure. I think if the weapons are back for um, Hurts, which I expect, you know, they got their bye week this week, sure. I, I would start Hurts. And then that's where you, the conversation yeah. starts, where it's like we Lamar or Daniels. And and the commanders came out and they, you know, I I don't know for sure if I believe them or not um, because it's easy for them to say it in their position. They almost need to say it and want to say it. But they said that that, that Jaden Daniels was their number one quarterback. That they that if they had the the right. one, they would have taken him over Caleb Williams. He certainly looks like he yeah. is deserving of that. It's looking good right now at the running back position. King Henry continues to dominate. Um, still <laughs> looks extremely fast. Once the locomotion uh, locomotive has left the station, you can't stop it. And then Justice Hill, six targets. I mean the. What were the what were the other passing stats for the entirety of the Baltimore Ravens? Because Mark Andrews had one target, he dropped it. Mm -hmm. Zay Flowers was he did nothing. nothingness. It was it was the running backs. Yeah, I mean th th this was a game. If um you know if you didn't watch it, it got out of hand quickly. quickly. I mean it was you know the first play of the game was Derrick Henry running into the end zone from very, very far away. Okay, here we go. Justice Hill led the team with six catches for 78 yards in the touchdown. Isaiah Likely had a catch. Rashad Bateman had a catch. Zay Flowers had a catch. Nelson Aguilar had two. And then Derrick Henry had three. <laughs> yeah. It, it was – this was one of those wild and weird games. And, and here's, here's the I thing because – I man. I don't know what you can even take away from this game. Forget this game. This season, what do you do with the Ravens? They're winning games now. I mean, they, they started 0-2 in, in tough battles, but they've played well. They've really been great the last two weeks, and they haven't needed to throw the ball. I think this is what they want to have happen, so it becomes so difficult to trust. I mean, you know, Mark Andrews, back-to-back -back weeks with Gooses. I know we'll, we'll bring his name up towards the end of the show, but yeah. like, you got to decide what to do, and and the thing is, is it's working. And again, like on on Lamar's uh, rushing touchdown last night, Mark Andrews was out there dominating these guys on that on those blocks. Just like Lamar is not getting injured or hit or hurt because the blocking of these tight ends has been awesome. Someone tell Mark Andrews to stop being a good blocker. <laughs> tell him to like let some guys through. Teach him a lesson. DeAndre Swift uh, tuned into our podcast last week where we were not very kind to him. And then he went 16 for 93 with a score on the ground and 7 for 72 through the air. I want to know how many I, – I, it's got to be like 10% of leagues where DeAndre Swift was started. He plays Carolina next week. Yeah, and, and so so he – you... No, he will 100% have a bad game. And, and, the, <laughs> and the reason why – the reason why he'll have a bad game is because he's going to be started. See, he was he was definitely started week one when he scored five fantasy points. Okay, he might have been started week two when he scored six fantasy points, and week three where he scored five fantasy points. And then it was like, okay, that's three strikes, you're out. He's on everyone's bench. Even even 
the Bears were talking about getting – Kyle said 41% on sleeper. 41%? Okay, there's a lot of dead leagues out there then. Um, <laughs> leaving him in there. So he's going to be started everywhere this next week. I mean, uh, he looked good. I mean, Roshan you got, you got, was still the goal line back. Yes, Roshan was the goal line back. I don't believe Khalil Herbert had even touched the ball despite no. them talking about getting him more involved. No, he only played special teams. And so um, – yeah, he will be started everywhere next week, which is the only reason I think he's going to have a bad week. It's not good analysis. It's just what he does to fantasy managers his whole career. Jordan Mason was awesome. Yet again, he is the running back five through the first month. The Cincinnati Bengals running backs, it was much closer to 50-50 in terms like the snaps was 60-40. And then with the work, the work was basically right down the middle. Chase Brown looked awesome. Uh, he had he was 15 for 80 with two on the ground. Uh, I believe both of those scores were in very close. And then Zach Moss, 15 for 51, and he had the, the score through the air. I don't know if they're both going to be viable moving forward, but... Yeah, I, I mean, you you got to pick up Chase Brown. You yeah. have to pay attention to uh, the, the fact that the split was even. Chase Brown clearly has more juice um, as far as speed. But Zach Moss has looked fine too. I, sure, I, you know I would guess going forward that it'll be continuing right about to be this. more about a fifty-fifty game, and you know they're they're not always going to get to play the Carolina Panthers next week. If you've got a fifty-fifty timeshare, we talked about you throw against Baltimore. That's the matchup. You can't really run against Baltimore if they're splitting work. I, I'm I'm going to bench both of them. Alva Kamara. Old man strength coming through the RB1 through the first month. Chuba Hubbard. He's the RB1. Yeah, Kamara is. I guess that makes sense. He got another touchdown and seven receptions this week. Yeah, he's he's been absolutely on fire. Chuba has looked great for the Carolina Panthers since Andy Dalton has taken over. Cut those four yeah, passes. Baby. Yeah, triple crown's coming in this That's week. That's right. That's right. It is a parte this week. So this is great if you have Chuba. It's probably less great if you were waiting on Jonathan Brooks and hoping that the offense would look good, but the running backs weren't able to get it done. It's I can't see the team just immediately moving on from Chuba. The, Brooks will get worked in, but it is him taking over. If that was your hope and dream, well, it, it would be at the second half at the earliest. Yeah, I, I think it'll be a month. If Jonathan Brooks is here next week, it will be a month from – this week where he's actually like got the chance to to lead the backfield the washington commanders brian robinson jr jason star of the week monster game 21 for 101 with a score on the ground and just how bad are the arizona cardinals on defense this eight, bad there was another running back on the team not austin eckler who was eight for 68 and two on the ground it was Jeremy McNichols. Jeremy McNichols. We you, remember Sticky McNichols? Uh, I don't remember Sticky McNichols. That's what I always call him in my head. But remember, For real? Jer yeah. Oh, I did not know that. I don't know. It's a weird thing that happens. But Jeremy McNichols from someone's couch, I imagine. like where From Boise State. What, five, no, no, nine. no. I'm saying what has Jeremy McNichols been up to? Uh, he's been he's been on the Washington Commanders, um, and he has not really been touching the ball. Had one rushing attempt before this week, but the Cardinals suck, and so their defense is another one definitely to target. Oh, I yeah. mean, just they they don't have the talent on the defensive side to stop anyone. Jonathan Taylor had himself a mighty fine game before he left against Pittsburgh. Stay tuned, we'll find out. Kyron Williams is going to die. <laughs> Kyron Williams cannot stop scoring touchdowns. He is hes everything for this offense. He is absolutely everything for this offense. This is a guy that's playing like 90% of snaps, and he's just... He was only 76% of the running back attempts this week. I mean, that's an incredibly great number. Yeah, I a 14% target share to go with that. 76% of the running back rush attempts for any team is outlandishly high. It's only down for him, who the previous week was at 92%. James Conner, 18 for 104 and a touchdown. Nico freaking Collins. He is. He is. Him. He is him. He is he. He has only one game 
out of four this year where he is below 117 receiving yards. He is on pace for over 2,000 receiving yards. Yeah, he's on pace right now for 182 targets, 127 receptions. This guy. 2,078 uh, receiving yards and eight and a half touchdowns. He won't necessarily keep up that pace. Uh, this matchup was perfect. We talk about the Jaguars. You want to target them. They play a ton of man defense. We knew that Nico was going to eat. We were only worried about his practice. Uh, was it a hamstring that he popped yes. up with? Yeah. That was the only concern at all for Nico. He crushed. I mean, you had him at more than 70, 70 yep. yards. He did that twice um, in the game. Yes, he did. And it, I don't know if you know this. I didn't know about it, Kamara. Uh, Nico is the wide receiver one. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, so when you're on pace for 2,000 receiving <laughs> yards, things have gone well for the first four games. Jaden Reed, Jordan Love was back. That meant Jaden Reed was back. Uh, he has look. He's been the wide receiver one. Did the Butterman two? Did the Butterman do anything? Uh, he was on the field. Okay, and if you don't know who the Butterman is, it's well, everyone knows. It's it, clearly Bo Melton. Yeah, he's Melton because he's like Butterman. <laughs> Uh, Bo, Bo Melton, yeah, he actually only played 14% of the snaps. Yeah, he's he is still going to take he's his time. irrelevant. But Dontavian Wicks, 13, thir targets. 13 targets, 5 for 78, two scores, dropped what should have been another touchdown mm -hmm. on, a, on a Hail Mary that hit him right in the hands. But uh, I don't have my rankings sorted out, but it's hard to see him not being the number one waiver wire pickup of the weekend, or of this week, I should say. Jordan Addison was back. Three for 72, got the score. Justin Jefferson, ho-hum, six for 85 and one. Addison got two scores. He also had a rushing touchdown. Oh, that's touchdown. right. So it was nice to see him uh, back there. Yeah, Justin Jefferson had a very bad game for him, six for 85 and a touchdown. And, I, you know, I got to take my lumps on, I, you know, we talked about Darnold. Um, right. But, like, my, my anti-Sam Darnold takes um, they were, affected Justin Jefferson because I th Justin Jefferson, I kept saying – He's going to, um, you know, he'll have over fifteen hundred yards on the season. Between the twenties, he's going to eat. He's the best wide receiver in football. He's going to be great. He's going to be a top ten guy. But he can't be the wide receiver one because he can't score enough touchdowns. He'll probably have, you know, five or six touchdowns on the season. Well, he has four touchdowns through four weeks and has not yet had a game without one. Sam Darnold is the only quarterback through four weeks with more than ten passing touchdowns. I believe number two is always oh, laser only at nine right No, baker's laser eight. is at eight he's at eight and yeah. and darnold's at 11 i think yeah it is correct crazy <sighs> laser mike evans cd lamb they had good games brian thomas jr uh so this is funny this was we were we were watching eight, the game six for 86 with a score and i had a plan coming in you did <laughs> I, I, had, I had a plan coming in this this week that i was really really hoping that brian thomas jr had a bad game because I, I've lost so many players. Uh, yeah, I'm just losing guys left, right, and center. You are. And I've got to find players out there that I can target and trade for um, uh, cheap that I think could go ham and, and really break the game. And so I was just rooting for Brian Thomas to have a bad game so I could go trade for him. And then right off the bat gets a touchdown and then just uh, crushes. Six for 86, the touchdown, a 13 uh yard rush attempt he's the wide receiver 13 on the season he's awesome he's gonna I mean I don't know what his ceiling can be with Trevor Lawrence because Trevor Lawrence well that's who he's stuck with yeah no, well that's what I'm saying so like you know if you put Brian Thomas in I think a better situation what I see on the field is like he could he could just dominate maybe we'll get a better offensive coach in there maybe uh, it, going with him, Christian Kirk had 12 targets. They heard us talking about what are you doing? Why is Christian Kirk not really involved? It's weird. Seven for 61 and a score. Josh Downs, it, Jay, you mentioned it, but nine targets turned into eight for 82 with a touchdown. He is – He's a waiver pickup he's a waiver, regardless. Yeah, he's a waiver pickup regardless. He's he's a good player, but we don't know what the status will be because if, if it, Richardson is back in a hobbled Richardson – I will not be excited to play Josh Downs. For the Panthers, Andy Dalton, the Red Rifle, keeps getting it done, throwing it to Deontay Johnson, Jason Star of the Week, 7 for 83 and a score. Xavier legit, 6 for 66, the mark of the beast, and two just 
It, ooh, ooh, drops that yeah. were uh, ooh. Yeah, they were bad. It's funny because we we put we put uh, Xavier legit in the you know the the kind of well he's in the studs here. Yeah, but he had a bad game. Like, football game. Football game. He, I mean, he he had some bad drops. He had some bad miscommunications. I mean, when he had the ball in his hands, you could see like, wow, that is a big, strong, fast dude, and he could do some special stuff. But he he looked like a rookie out there. Like, you compare him versus Brian Thomas Jr., and that's where it's like they both had good games. They're both talented rookies. One is a One looks like he could be a great wide receiver, and the other – just looks like a, a raw athlete. Tucker Kraft of the Green Bay Packers. He plays tight end. It seems like the Green Bay Packers pulled themselves a Baltimore Ravens because uh, <laughs> Luke Musgrave was the chosen one last year. Last year in the draft. And they went him and then Tucker Kraft. Was Luke a second round pick? Am I remembering that right? Luke, correct. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, and then Tucker Craft was right in the third, very similar to the Hayden Hurst, Mark Andrews situation for the Ravens. And Tucker Craft has taken the the job. He has left Luke Musgrave in the in the dust. And Tucker's been like been dealing with injuries, and he still is running ahead of Luke Musgrave. Yeah, if you look at the snap percentages, Musgrave twenty five percent, forty four percent, fifty six percent, and this week thirty three percent. Whereas Tucker Craft has been on the field. 96, 80, 67, and 86 percent of the time. I don't. I mean, maybe with Christian Watson going down, you can have a little bit more confidence. But I still possibly. Yeah. I still have a a little bit of a difficult time feeling like it's a good shot with all the wide receivers that are there and this and the great running game. Like it feels like the tight end is like the least needed thing for this. Team. It was also again the 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 monumental catch up. They like they were playing from behind the entire game. Taysom Hill had the two rushing scores. The Muth, he's getting he's getting loose. Yeah, by tight end seven standards. targets, uh, five for fifty seven and a touchdown. He's the only tight end with four plus receptions in every single game. So that's great, but it hasn't amounted to much because right. really, like this, it, it's so sad that this year we really are looking for five for fifty. <laughs> like, like <laughs> genuinely, if your tight end goes out and gets five for fifty, yeah. you're okay. Yeah, but you it's are. really the touchdowns you want, and they have not been coming. Um, this week, I was really hoping for a bounce back. I, I, I tried to speak it into existence, tweet it out. It's like this is the week; they're all going to be great. Um, Kincaid was you did okay. Honestly, Kincaid was pretty good. Kelsey came back to life. He Kittle did. was good. Well, uh, Taysom Hill was good. Everybody except Mark Andrews. The Mark tight end one on the season was also good. Seven for sixty-two for Dallas Goddard. He doesn't have a touchdown, but the the Travis Kelsey is this. Yeah, I mean he's back. Yeah. So Rasheed Rice leaving the Kansas City Chiefs. Are we right back? Yeah, I mean we're one hundred percent right back. Kelsey was nine targets, seven for eighty nine, and we saw this last year at the beginning of the year. I mean there there is like incredibly strong correlation. Last season at the beginning of the year, Kelsey was the most dominant tight end, yeah. was way better than Laporta or anyone else on the field. He was crushing, and it looked like when you spent the f number five overall pick on him that maybe you should have spent the number four overall pick. He was dominating like that. And then that was when rookie Rushy Rice was barely involved, was playing you know lower than 50% snap counts in a lot of those games. Midway in the season, they flipped the switch. Rushy Rice became the number one target started playing 85% of the snaps, and Kelsey was a wet fart for fantasy in the second mm, half of last yes. year. Just terrible. And so you start this year, and Rushy Rice is the, the dominating target market share leader of this clubhouse, and it comes at the expense of Kelsey. With Rushy Rice basically almost for sure done for the rest of the year, I think Kelsey – they who else is it? I know. I, I mean, I mean, it's not going to be Juju Smith-Schuster and, and – Xavier Worthy just getting 15 targets. This is Kelsey. So I, I think Kelsey and is I, bad. I think what what happens with Worthy? Do, do they do they say, okay, you're a first-round pick, dude. It's time to step up. You've got to be a full-time guy now. Yeah, I, I, I think they're going to have to involve him more and more as the season goes along, just like they did with Rushy Rice last year. I think Xavier Worthy is – 
a good football player and a good wide receiver. Um, not necessarily great, but more than what they've been utilizing him as. So I think he'll be pushed forward. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we will commiserate with you. There's studs, and there's duds. Pooped in his big boy pants. The, the Buffalo Bills just put them all on here. Yeah. The what? Ravens shellacked them. You know, I saw I saw something. I forget how many games it's been, but it was it was an incredible run where the Bills have not lost by more than six points. I mean, they're just never, ever laid over a lap and spanked. Never. <laughs> not not in the like not in the <laughs> Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen era. You know, yeah. as soon as he got there and they were, they were to thirty five. Treated like meat that is getting tenderized. Yeah, they were really pulverized. Josh Allen was we got a real red light, green light situation going on. He play. let's see, the Bills play Houston next week. I think they'll be all right. Kyler Murray, eh, goodness gracious, what a disappointing game from the Arizona Cardinals. It started off great, an immediate touchdown to Marvin Harrison Jr., and then they couldn't figure out how to beat the legendary staunch defense of the Washington Commanders. This was... The most disappointed. Look, I know people are disappointed in the Bills, but they're playing the Ravens. Yeah, I mean it happens. It's the Baltimore Ravens. They are and they are a top tier football team. Washington, while they're figuring it out on offense, their defense is still trash, and the Arizona Cardinals could do nothing. Yeah, the well, the, James actually James Conner was was okay, and then they he, just, but they like the the game plan was terrible. Part of the issue was how bad the Cardinals defense was allowed the Commanders to have these long drives and just right eat up a lot of clock. Like Kyler was 16 for 22. Completion percentage wise he was he was fine. I'll bet his passer rating is okay. But for fantasy he was bad. The Cardinals stunk. Uh, and this was in a matchup we we talk about you want to target the Commanders and you do since the beginning of last year. Washington has allowed the most fantasy points to quarterbacks. It's just the two worst performances against them were both Cardinals. It was Joshua Dobbs uh, last year scoring one fantasy point, and this week Kyler with 10 fantasy Where points. Where are we at with Kyler? Because week one, it looked it looked promising against the Buffalo Bills on the road uh, in Buffalo to open the season. We knew it would be tougher. Has the crazy Marvin Harrison breakout game against the Rams, and now Detroit – he was the QB 17 with under 15 points two weeks ago. 10 points this week against Washington. Next two weeks are on the road against San Francisco and then Green Bay. Then he gets the Chargers after that. What's your panic level with Kyler Murray? Um, I, you know, I, I think he's I think he's still going to be an every week start because he should be rushing the ball. That was the weirdest part of this game. Like the game plan against the commanders seemed like there wasn't one. And what's crazy about this is it. The Commanders were the one with the short week. Like they played on Monday Night Football. They they flew straight to Arizona. They didn't even go home, and then they came in here and and really just made the Cardinals look foolish. But Kyler only had three rushing yards in the game, and the, the, and you know the previous three weeks he had fifty seven, fifty nine, right. and forty five rushing yards, and then he just didn't run the ball. It was a it was a really weird game. I I still think you're gonna view him as. He'll be in the top twelve when you when you put your rankings together every week. I don't know how you would lower him, but that's only low the, enough to bench. The him. hopes and dreams were he's he's back to being a top seven, top five type of an option, but I like top twelve. That's not that's yeah, I mean, a, that, that's not great. I mean, uh, you you look at it with uh, Laser Mayfield. You know, would you rather start? Would you would you make that pivot and start starting Laser over Kyler? You know, Kyler. In yes. San Francisco, on the road, very possible. A tough defense, divisional game. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. we'll take a strong look at that this week. Uh, nineteen for twenty-nine, two hundred forty-five passing yards with a touchdown and interception. Derek Carr. Oh no, I'm sorry. That was Patrick Mahomes. That was. Well, he lost. This is the. He I mean, lost look, Rushy Rice. He was our tradeaway candidate, or Andy's tradeaway candidate this past weekend. With Rice out of the picture, this is like 
Mahomes has been the QB 13, 14, 15, 15. Like, I think I need to move past I need to move past my anger and just be like, hey, I'm no longer mad at Patrick Mahomes because I am lowering my expectations. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the right way to do it. I mean, this is a quarterback that's going to go out there and score 15 fantasy points regularly. He he doesn't go out there and it's very rare for him to go out and score, you know, sub-10 fantasy points the way that a Derek Carr can do pretty often. Derek Carr is the next guy on here, uh, 239 and uh, no touchdown. Yeah. So um, I, I, you're you're talking about Patrick Mahomes is just a high floor play, but with their defense being great, that you know, that I kind of hope that their defense would take a step back this year. You know, they lost Snead, and and maybe I was hoping that was like the mm -hmm. key cog, uh, but their defense has been really really good, and so yeah, Mahomes is just a streaming streaming candidate. Kirk Cousins did not have a strong game, not a hundred percent his fault his defense was taking care of things at the running back position jason who baby breeces feces 10 carries four yards we're talking about Brees hall yeah five targets turned into two for 14 so what 16 total yards on 15 opportunities yeah he did not score what he did not score three fantasy points in half ppr scoring i think this is a you know throw it away game the, this was a, a game where you had the Jets lose with nine points to a team that scored ten points. There, there was Bo, weather. Bo, yes, it was it was a rainy game. Uh, Bo Nix, I believe, got the W with 66 passing yards, uh, something like that. It was that. very low, I'll confirm. Um, the whole Jets offense – was putrid 60 you gave oh, him six bonus gave him yards. extra yards only 60 yards and a dominating victory um the split of carries 10 for Brees, eight for braylon allen um is not quite as indicative of like if you look at the snap counts you had basically like 70 percent of the snaps still going to Brees hall this is just a bad game the the denver defense is really good but next week at minnesota on the road against a, a one of those teams we said you can't right. run on I mean, you're still starting Brees every week. Sure. Uh, speaking of diarrhea, I'm going to check in with the, the douches alley. Someone's missing. Oh, no. Someone has gone missing. He just ran out. Guys, this is, it's not a bit anymore. Yeah, this is this, this is a, I, a a doctor is needed. I DM'd him and said, this is probably going to come up you're on the air. You're on the show. And he said, good, because oh, I'm going to give this toilet the business. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. We gotta we gotta get this man on a on a diet. Get get him some fiber. Make sure he's a little bit more regular. <laughs> Dude. The mid, Falcon. Mid show falconing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh the diarrhea continues. Hey, Carson. I mean, at least he waited for the right yeah, segment. Yeah, yeah, we're in the right area. Carson Steele. Uh, I think that uh that dream is probably gone. Of it will either be Kareem Hunt or perhaps Clyde Edwards Alaire. James Cook for the for the Bills. Again, everyone in the Bills, it was it was not what we wanted. They had to abandon the run early. I mean, in my opinion, they should not have. James Cook was James Cook was look was looking good. He was looking like James Cook. They weren't they were not cooking in the passing game. I thought it was a bad decision to move away from him so quickly. Yeah, I, th I think they just needed to to throw the ball to him because it, it is right. difficult. Yeah, he to, had one target. It's difficult to run on Baltimore in general, and then you were down early. So I, I do understand abandoning the run. It's it's not going to work out for you, but I don't understand why they didn't utilize Cook in the screen game, get him out in space, and, and then use his speed. Cam Akers. <laughs> oh, man. I was – Cam Akers. I was more on his side this year – or this week – I should say last week it was, hey, the volume should be there, so maybe he's okay. This week against the Jaguars, it felt like this this should be a good situation. It was not. It yeah. was not. CJ Stroud and Nico took care of it, and so did Agumba Wale, the other running back. Ramondre Stevenson fumbled immediately. I, they, I, I couldn't believe that they – I mean, they, they still had him play the majority of yeah, snaps. they came back, but 13 for 43 – he did have four catches for 19 yards. What's your temperature on Ramondre Stevenson? Well, I, and Gibson had another 
huge chunk play. Like, I'm I'm actually fine with Ramondre Stevenson. I think okay. Ramondre is a good buy low candidate right now. Miami, um, Houston, Jacksonville are the next three weeks. I mean, you had two great defenses when you were on the road. They went and played the Jets, and they went and played the Niners. And and the 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 Patriots aren't a good team, but they still kept going to him. You know, he had 18 opportunities, five of which were through the air, which is more valuable for fantasy. But he was playing against a really hard defense with a really bad offense and a really bad offensive line. So I don't expect him to be great by any means. Don't hear that. I think Ramondre is just going to continue getting volume, and when there are good matchups, I think he'll have enough fantasy points where he should be started. Uh, I, I think I agree with that, but that, that will be – that's a brutal situation to be in where Ramondre is – you emotionally when you see Ramondre on your team, you feel like, oh, I have an RB2. But I think he's just an RB2 matchup-based only. Yeah, like the week one was the Bengals. Well, it turns out the Bengals defense is not very good. The Seattle Seahawks, we still don't know because the the, the Seahawks defensive numbers overall are okay, but they have yeah they've they've had chump matchups so far. Yeah, they've had chump matchups, and we haven't seen yet uh, tonight's performance. Th this next week though against Miami, I mean Miami right now is 29th in fantasy points given up to okay. running back, so so we'll be all right. Yeah, uh, at the wide receiver position. Garrett Wilson, this is – it was predictable because it was against Patrick Sertan. The Denver Broncos are a good defense, but now they play Minnesota next week. It's We, we got to see something here. Brighter we days. We got to see something. Brighter days are ahead. We, we knew – I mean, we talked about this before the matchup. This, the, the schedule has been about as bad as it can get it for really, Garrett Wilson. It has been. Now, I am – I mean, I was done even before this season yeah. of making excuses for Garrett Wilson. At some point, a dude has to do something with all the targets he gets. And right. he's still getting them. I mean, he had eight targets this week, nine the week before, 11 week one. Uh, you know, he's only had one game where he scored 10 fantasy points. You can't, you can't be getting double-digit targets on the reg and not putting up fantasy points – ever agreed um hasn't even been a wide receiver two one time this season so uh brighter days are ahead but he is not Garrett Wilson is not a Justin Jefferson like that's what you hoped you hoped that Garrett yes. Wilson was going to come in here and really show that he is one of the top five wide receivers in the NFL and if he gets good quarterback play then he'll put up top five fantasy numbers and he's not he is he's a, a very good NFL wide receiver but he's not you know um, I saw someone talking about it online, um, and you know, you just look at the eyeball test. Look at Malik Neighbors. Yeah. Look at him coming in. Yep. And it's like you can't stop that dude. You cannot stop him. He's 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 a different level of athleticism. He's like that Jamar Chase type. Sure, Garrett Wilson. You can't stop him. Yeah. So maybe top twelve is not it, but twelve to twenty four. That's what we're gonna hope for. Brandon Ayuk continues his suck fest. <laughs> uh, his now again. The the Rams one was was that one was weird. Uh, two weeks ago, when Juwan Jennings had the the incredible game, schedule wise, again, it's not been great. Like Garrett Wilson's had a a brutal schedule. So the 49ers have as well. It, especially talking about Brandon Ayuk with you know the Jets uh, in Week One, Minnesota, they're they're legit. And then Christian Gonzalez and the 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 Patriots. That, I think that was what he got. Arizona next week. I'm gonna play Brandon Ayuk. I'm gonna do it. You can't stop yeah, me. Yeah, and I think you should. And then next week, if we have another 50 yards from Brandon Ayuk, we'll hit the panic alarm. Amari Cooper. Oh man, he so, did have an 80 yard touchdown call back. Well, not only called back, but called back for nothing. The the, the right. It was called back on a hold. I watched that play. Like I didn't see that play live. Um, I, I missed it when we were watching it, so I, I went back and, and watched it. So I watched it, and I watched it, and I watched it. I didn't see the holding call and what number it was attributed to. So I, I, I couldn't even find – I was watching each offensive lineman, and, uh, and I was like, which one was called a hold? Because I didn't see it on any of them. It just looked like a totally normal play, 80-yard touchdown. Amari Cooper should not be in this category. Amari Cooper should be nine targets, five receptions, a hundred and uh, 
15 yards and a touchdown. He should be in the complete other section. We do have a tiny little note here that came through from uh, Spotrack, which is a uh, kind of like a salary cap uh, website that helps you track contracts. And they reported the Browns converted all but $1.21 million of Amari Cooper's salary into a signing bonus, Ooh. which makes him an extremely affordable trade candidate. So Kansas City? Dude, the Chiefs need to I'm get not, I'm Amari not saying, Cooper. But I'm also not not saying that we'll see. We'll see how the Cleveland Browns are doing and if Amari Cooper gets traded. Zay Flowers was part of the Ravens experience. The Bears... Caleb Williams had 157 yards. DJ Moore did have a touchdown to save his day. DJ Moore was okay. Although, what's going on with his attitude? DJ have you Moore? noticed this? DJ Moore is like a because DJ Moore is a pissy it, pants. Because DJ Moore has every single year of his career, except for once, had re, had competent quarterback play. But you know what? It's like he's expecting failure. You watch like he he should have had another. He's touchdown. a broken shell of a man. Have Caleb Williams is terrible right now. Caleb Williams hit him. I mean, he obviously got the touchdown, but he actually should have had two touchdowns. Where Caleb, I think, threw a good ball. When I watched it live, I was like, "Oh my gosh, Caleb, you you way overthrew DJ Moore." And then you watch the replay from the other angle, and you go, "Why did DJ Moore like DJ Moore?" He ran the route, but he just slowed down and didn't look back because he just assumed, I'm not going to get the ball. Maybe. This play's not going to work. And then it was like, if you just kept running, he would have hit you in stride in the end zone. So, I don't know. And then and then have you seen, like, he's sitting by himself at the end of the bench, like all game, every game now? I'm like, telling you, he is, a, he is a broken man. He was my trade-away guy from last week, three for 22. He had a, he had a touchdown, a touchdown. And he's outside of the top 30 wide receivers. That's how bad it is. Look, Carolina next week, I don't know. I'm out. I'm out. Quentin Johnston, we knew that was going to be bad against the Chiefs. Brock Bowers, really, really disappointing with no Devontae Adams, only two for 19. Kyle Pitts was a goose. Mike Gesicki was negative. Um, a, a, a side note here, in your dynasty leagues and maybe even redraft, we'll see uh, – Eric All mm -hmm. Jr. of the Cincinnati Bengals. I went in all my dynasty leagues last to week see to try we, to pick him up, and he was rostered everywhere. He is someone to keep an eye on. This could just be dynasty for now, but especially with, with Mike Gesicki being re this bad this week, he's from Iowa. He's from tight end U. Things are... The arrow is pointed up for him. That's what that I, I I can't predict a breakout or anything, but the arrow is pointing up. No, the, yeah, and, I, and for me, this is just a dynasty thing. I, I wouldn't be picking him up as a stash and redraft. There's you don't need to be rostering him. Um, but he does look like he will eventually get this job and win this job from a dynasty perspective. You expect a good offense here. You expect T Higgins gone. Um, certainly check him. Check if he's on your waivers and pick him up. All right, so we're we're already very long, so I think maybe we'll save the Baltimore Ravens discussion for tomorrow, but we need to have one. Mark Andrews, one target, he dropped it. Isaiah Likely, one catch for 26 yards. Again, crazy weird game, but now we're four weeks into a season and we've had to make – we've had to try and figure out what happened to Mark Andrews in three of four of them. It's unbelievable. I mean, it is. Uh, it, it's it's crazy because Mark Andrews is still to this moment an integral cog of this offense. Yes, he's he's not he old, is busted. He's not broken. Part of the heart of this team. He's you know it's it's not like he's on the way towards retirement, but he's unusable in fantasy. He has a seventeen game pace right now if he plays. Like he's played this first month for the whole season, he would have at the end of the year twenty five catches for two hundred and seventy five yards. So and that's it. Uh, we'll talk about him more during the tight end section of the, of tomorrow's waiver show. That is going to do it, everybody, for the show. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the games tonight. Hope you get the points you need. And we will see you tomorrow. Talking waivers, big time waivers tomorrow. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.